it worked, but no one knows how. Over 1800 years ago, a Chinese inventor built a machine that could detect earthquakes hundreds of kilometers away, and it never missed. In another corner of the world, ancient builders shaped a metal so sharp it could slice silk in mid-air. Yet, scientists today still can't replicate the original formula. And buried beneath layers of volcanic ash in Crete, a disk was found with symbols so strange that even AI can't decode them. This video uncovers 15 of the oldest technologies ever found. Technologies so advanced, so precise, they've left modern scientists completely stumped. Could ancient civilizations have known more than we give them credit for? Let's kick things off with something that sounds like sci-fi, but was built nearly 2,000 years ago. Back in 132 CE, Chinese scientist Zhang Heng invented the world's first seismoscope. That's right, he built a machine that could detect earthquakes before anyone knew tectonic plates even existed. People back then believed earthquakes happened because the heavens were angry or yin and yang fell out of balance. But Zhang Heng? He thought wind and air pressure were responsible. He wasn't totally right, but still way ahead of his time. Now, here's the wild part. His seismoscope didn't just detect that an earthquake had occurred. It could show the direction of the quake, even if it was over 500 kilometers away. The machine looked like a bronze jar, with eight dragon heads pointing in different directions. When a quake happened, the right dragon would drop a metal ball into the mouth of a toad below it. That ball told people exactly where the tremor had come from. And here's what makes this even crazier. Modern replicas can't match its accuracy. One time, it went off with no shaking in the area. Everyone thought it was a glitch, until word came in days later. An earthquake had hit Longxi, hundreds of kilometers away. This wasn't just a cool trick. It was centuries ahead of modern seismic science, and we still don't fully understand how Zhang Heng pulled it off. From ancient China to ancient India, the next technology doesn't just detect something, it flies. Hindu texts like the Vedas talk about Vimanas, flying vehicles that carried gods across the skies, seas, and even into outer space. Some were single pilot crafts, others were massive multi-level flying cities. That's right, seven-story airships are described in these 3,000-year-old texts. One passage from the Mahabharata talks about a Vimana that glows like the sun, makes thunderous noise, and moves with such speed and force that it terrifies anyone watching. It also mentions weapons winged with gold and flying chariots that sound suspiciously like jet fighters. Some of these texts describe materials like quicksilver and unknown honey-like liquids used as fuel. One book, the Vaimanika Sestra, lays out schematics, fuel sources, and flight controls. So, what were they describing? Some think they were just telling myths, others believe they were writing down what they saw. Technology so advanced, they didn't have the words to explain it. And the most intense part? These ancient stories also include references to catastrophic wars with weapons that sound nuclear. Which brings us to... Inside a Sanskrit epic called the Drona Parva, there's a passage that reads like a post-apocalyptic nightmare. It talks about a single weapon so powerful, it shines like a thousand suns. It wipes out everything. Birds fall from the sky, armor melts onto soldiers, pregnant women lose their babies. That's not poetic language. It's eerily close to how radiation poisoning works. This is 3,000 years before the first atomic bomb. But the effects described? They sound shockingly similar to Hiroshima or Chernobyl. Even Robert Oppenheimer, the man who built the bomb, once quoted the Bhagavad Gita, saying, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. And yeah, he studied Sanskrit. He knew what those texts said. Some researchers even connect this story to strange findings in Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, two ancient cities in the Indus Valley. Let's jump to Central America, where you'll find giant, perfectly round stone balls just lying around. Over 350 of them have been found across Costa Rica, ranging in size from tiny marbles to boulders that weigh 15 tons. These spheres are carved from gabbro, a tough volcanic rock. And here's the mystery. No one knows why they were made or how they got so smooth. Many were found in alignment patterns, possibly pointing to solstices, celestial movements, or sacred landmarks. Some sit on mounds that once marked the homes of elites. 
Others are still in their original spots, protected by layers of sediment. And the craziest part? The civilization that made them, called the Dequi culture, left no written records, just these stones. Today, they're so iconic that one even appears on Costa Rica's 500 Cologne banknote. Archaeologists believe they were created between 800 and 1500 AD, but how did these people shape these stones with such precision without modern tools? And why did they put so much effort into perfect spheres? That's why scientists are still scratching their heads. Now let's talk about the world's first steam engine, built nearly 2,000 years before the Industrial Revolution. This one comes from Hero of Alexandria, a Greek-Egyptian engineer in the first century AD. He built a machine called the Aeola Pile, a hollow sphere that spun using steam jets. Basically, you heat up water, the steam flows through tubes into the sphere, and as it escapes from bent nozzles, the whole thing rotates. Sounds familiar? Yep. It's basically a steam-powered turbine, and it works using Newton's third law of motion, centuries before Newton was even born. So what did the ancients use this for? That's the thing. Nobody knows. Some think it was a temple toy, just meant to impress visitors. Others believe it was a working prototype that never got developed any further. Either way, this machine shows that the Greeks understood steam propulsion long before the Industrial Age. They just didn't apply it to transportation or industry, but what if they had? You've probably seen those gorgeous blades with ripple-like waves on the surface. That's Damascus steel, and it's not just pretty, it's one of the toughest and sharpest types of steel ever made. But here's the wild part, no one knows how ancient blacksmiths actually made the original version. We're talking about a metal that was strong, flexible, stayed sharp in battle, and could cut through other swords. Ancient warriors swore by it. This wasn't some random accident either. Damascus steel came from special high-carbon ingots, known as Woot steel, imported from India around 300 BCE. The real mystery? The exact method disappeared by the 1800s. Modern smiths tried to recreate it using pattern welding, basically fusing layers of steel together, but that's not the same as the original stuff. The true formula for Woot's Damascus is lost. Today, Damascus is all about looks. Knife makers love the patterns, but the science behind how ancient smiths achieved both beauty and battlefield power? Still unresolved. Now, let's jump over to ancient Crete. In 1908, archaeologists dug up something strange at the Minoan Palace of Phaistos. A clay disc, about six inches across, filled with spiraled symbols no one has ever decoded. It's called the Phaistos Disc. Both sides are stamped with 45 different pictograms. Things like a tattooed head, a helmet, an axe, and animals. But what do they mean? That's the question no one's cracked. Not even AI has solved it. Some experts think it's a hymn to the goddess named Astarte. Others say it's a calendar, a prayer, or maybe even an ancient board game. More than 26 people have tried to decipher it, and all of them came up short. The latest theory from Dr. Gareth Owens says the disc is a religious song, one side dedicated to a mother goddess, the other to the goddess of love. But even he admits reading it is one thing, understanding it is another. The symbols just don't match any known language. And so far, nothing like it has ever been found. Until more discs show up, or someone cracks the code, we're left guessing. If you love a good mystery, this one's for you. The Voynich Manuscript is a 600-year-old book written in a language no one can read. It sits in a Yale University library filled with bizarre drawings. Naked women, strange plants, zodiac charts, and what looks like herbal recipes, all written in a looping script that appears nowhere else in history. Some say it's a lost medical guide, others think it's a hoax, but the language follows real patterns, just like human speech. Words repeat where they should. The sections even use different vocabularies depending on the drawings next to them. That's why experts still believe it's real. Even top codebreakers from World War II tried and failed to decode it. The script has its own alphabet, unique grammar, and even its own rhythm. So, who wrote it? What were they trying to say? And most importantly, why write an entire book no one can read? To this day, no one has the answer. Let's rewind to 750 BCE. In an Assyrian palace in modern-day Iraq, archaeologists found a curious piece of rock crystal. It's now known as the Nimrud lens. At first glance, it looks simple, like a polished pebble. But this little object might have been the world's first magnifying glass. 
It's small, only about 3.8 centimeters wide, but has a focal length of 12 centimeters, giving it about three times magnification. That's enough to help someone carve tiny detailed art or read tiny scripts. Some believe the Assyrians used it for astronomy. Others think it was just decorative. But here's the kicker. The lens was found near delicate carvings that might have been done with optical help. One scientist even proposed that the Assyrians used it in a telescope. That might explain how they saw Saturn as a god surrounded by rings, long before telescopes existed. So, was this lens part of a lost science, or just a pretty piece of glass? A lightning weapon that shows up across the world? Meet the Vajra. In Hindu tradition, it's the weapon of Indra, the god of thunder. Crafted by the divine carpenter, Dvashta, it was used to destroy demons and restore light and water to the earth. But here's the twist. It's not just in India. The same type of three-pronged weapon appears in Greek myths. Hello Zeus, in Norse stories, Thor's hammer, and even in South America, where Aztec gods use lightning axes. The Vajra started as a weapon. Then, in Buddhism, it became a peaceful symbol of enlightenment. But its origins point to something much older. Some say it's a memory of real tech. Something that produced sound, fire, and raw power. And it's not just stories. Across cultures, the design is nearly identical. From India to Ireland, from Peru to Japan, gods use this same kind of thunder weapon. Coincidence or memory of a lost device? How about a Roman cup that changes color depending on light? The Lycurgus Cup, made in the 4th century, turns green when lit from the front, and bright red when lit from behind. Sounds futuristic? It's nanotech, 1600 years before the term existed. The glass holds tiny particles of gold and silver, just 70 nanometers wide. That's what causes the color shift. Scientists today still struggle to recreate it. The cup also has detailed carvings, showing the story of King Lycurgus caught on the vines by Dionysus, the god of wine. That's why many believe the cup was used during cult celebrations. The technology to make this glass was so rare, only one full cup like it survives. And the way those particles were blended into the glass? That secret vanished with the Roman Empire. Our final mystery takes us to the battlefield. Greek fire was a weapon used by the Byzantine Empire from the 7th to the 12th century. Think of it like ancient napalm. It stuck to ships and kept burning, even on water. The formula? Still unknown. Historians think it might have included pine resin, sulfur, or even quicklime, but no one's been able to recreate it exactly. And that's because it was a military secret so protected, it vanished completely after the empire fell. Greek fire saved Constantinople during multiple Arab sieges. It turned the tide in naval warfare. It came out of tubes on ships, in handheld flamethrowers, and even grenades. Some say it roared like thunder. Others say it screamed through the air. Whatever it was, it was deadly and unforgettable. These 12 technologies, they weren't science fiction. They were real, built by real people, but somehow, the how got lost. Maybe buried maybe kept secret? Drop a comment below. Which one of these mysteries blew your mind? And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more ancient mysteries and forgotten genius from history.